Hello, what is up? My name is Vincent Baker, and today I'm with my lovely fiance, Abby. Hey. And we're going to be discussing Soul Eater, which is uh, it's a, bit of, a bit of an older anime now, but it is still, uh, um, I don't know. It's still relevant? Relevant? I don't know. It's it's great. It, it uh, We like it, so we wanted to watch it, so we had an anime club going on in our Discord community. And basically for Anime Club, we watched four episodes a week, and as the weeks transpired, we discussed everything going on, and uh, had some cool like giveaways and discussions and things like that. And I wanted to top everything off with a spoiler discussion, because I haven't done a spoiler discussion since the Final Fantasy VII Remake one, which is super awesome. If you love Final Fantasy VII Remake, check out that one. Uh, we've also done one on Ruby, but we have not done one since, so I want to do one, so here we are. So, before we dive in, before, hold up, we have a cool new art print that we commissioned uh, from this lovely artist, uh, we'll leave a link to her work below, and if you would like an art print, you can get one from our store, which will also be linked below. It's, it features Maka and Soul as a scythe, and the cool slash creepy moon up top. It's a really cool art print, really dig it. So. We're happy to have that, and we have a lot of other cool stuff over there as well, because I make card games and board games and all that fun stuff. So, if you're into that, then uh, you should check us out. We also, oh my god, we have a ghost <laughs> in here. Uh, <laughs> we also have a cool Halloween card game that we've made. Um, I did the game mechanics, and Abby did all the artwork, so check that out as well. Anyways, let's dive right into it. Yeah. Alright, what's up first, Abby? I don't know. I didn't come prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, okay, so um, there's a lot to go into, or there's a lot that we could go into. Um, I don't want to start with the end, because the end is the easiest thing to, to talk about. The end is controversial, to say the least. But yeah. I don't want to start with that. Instead, let's talk about, um, so right out the gate, what is your like first impressions of Soul Eater? Now, for those watching... Um, I've watched Soul Eater, I think this is my fourth time, and I think I, I think I first saw Soul Eater around when it came out, maybe 2010, 2011, and this last time I watched it, it had been years before I had seen it, so I, I kind of watched it three times uh, in the span of every couple of years, then I went maybe like four years without watching it, and then I watched it again, so it's been interesting for me to watch it with with these kind of uh with these eyes that have seen so much anime in between that time <laughs> and to have a bit of that distance um s the thing that stood out to me the most was Soider was funnier than what i remembered it looks better than what i remembered the music's better than what i remembered the uh, the english dub is perfect and it just it, it was it was like better it was like better than what I remembered in all these different ways though since I had seen it so many times since I had seen it at least three times before I wasn't like hooked like I didn't feel that sense of being hooked but I did watch it a lot before so you know it kind of it, it lost it, it, it like a lot of times when I watch modern anime I love being hooked to it and a lot of that comes from like not like not knowing where it's gonna go so, unfortunately, just by the nature of how things are, it kind of lost that for me, but I'm happy that everything else was, like, better than what I remembered. Yeah. Uh, and then with you, Abby, what was your experience with, like, watching Soul Eater before, uh, that sort of thing? Um, watching it before... Okay, so I'd seen, like, some episodes here and there staying over at a friend's house initially, like, when it was new. Um, but I was kind of an anime noob at that time, so it didn't really, like, hook me quite yet. <laughs> but then a different friend later, uh, we were both getting into anime at the same time, and she was like, hey, I found Soul Eater. You should try it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I did really enjoy it, but normally my, like, attention span for longer anime is not that good so I watched up to like episode 25 ish like I, I would get to the end of like the awakening of the Kishin every like I probably watched through that part like two 
two times, and then like rewatched my favorite episodes from that <laughs> part over and over a handful of times. But for some reason, I just never could progress all the way to the end. So this was my first time actually seeing it from start to finish, just totally in order. Yeah, because it had yeah. probably been like five or six years since you saw the first half, right? Oh, yeah. So you saw the first half like five or six years ago. Then with the anime club, you have watched the first half again, and then you finished and actually seen the entirety of the story. Are you yeah. happy that you finished it? I am. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so did you have any any impressions that whenever you went back since it had been five or six years, and you're like, wow, this is different than I remembered? Did that, did that hit you in any way? Um, the only thing that really hit me as far as like, wow, this is different, is my taste in characters <laughs> is a little different than it used to be. Because when I was... Well, Probably a lot different, it seems, from what you told me. Yeah. Because I feel like mine is slightly different, but I still feel like mine is still very similar. But yours, from what I've heard, seems like a lot different. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, when I first watched it, actually, I think it was more... How old am I now? <laughs> You're 22, I 20, think. Yeah. 22. So when I was first watching it, I believe I was 14. Oh, wow. Okay. No, I didn't know it's been that long. <laughs> uh, Jeez. Maybe 15? Maybe. Um, and at that time, Death the Kid was my favorite character. Pretty much just because I thought he was cute. <laughs> But, I mean, he was funny, but yeah. I was like, oh, he, he's handsome. <laughs> but now, as a 22-year-old, I have, like, zero interest <laughs> in Kid. I mean, he's still, like, kind of funny, but, yeah, he's not he's not my favorite character anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, you like him as a character, but there's not that thing of, like, oh, like, that's a cute character, so I'm gonna, like, like them more yeah. out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, you, you, you like Death the Kid, though. I do like him. Okay. Nothing against him whatsoever. <laughs> He's cool. But, yeah. Alright, so before I knew your favorite character was Death the Kid. At least back then. Yeah. Um, where would you rank your characters now and like where would he fall on that list? Out of the... Out main, of all of them. Just out of everyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Favorite <laughs> character. Uh, well, okay, you already know my favorite character is Mafune. Which is a... That's a... Uh... That's a that's a different opinion. Mafune is awesome though. Yeah. Just you, know, you normally don't hear people be like Mafune, <laughs> top, top character. I, yeah, it's sort of a I guess a weird choice because he's not in that many episodes, but when he's there, he's super cool. Yeah, he's the coolest guy ever. Yeah. He's great. He's like who Soul should inspire to be or aspire to yeah. be. Yeah. 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 And like his his fighting style is the coolest too, the infinite sword technique. Yeah. It's super cool. Um, so, Mifune at number one for you. Who's number two? Um, hmm, I'm, I'm going to say Soul is my number two. All right. The rule of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. All um, right. And then going towards totally not cool at all <laughs> is Spirit. Okay. <laughs> Um, just because he's hilarious. Yeah, I feel like I've heard you laugh the most at his stuff. Yeah, he's... Did you remember him being that funny? Like, do you think you found him that funny when you were younger? No. Oh, okay, well, I still thought he was funny, but, mm -hmm. like, not the funniest character. I mean, I, I cringed more than I laughed, probably. Okay. But I, I don't know what changed exactly, but <laughs> watching it this time, I just thought it was funny. Okay. <laughs> so we got Spirit. Um, then maybe Stein? Okay. He, he's a popular character, and he's really awesome. Yeah. Okay. Then who? Uh, <laughs> um, Sid? Yeah, you like Sid a lot. I noticed that. Yeah. Do you think he's just very funny? Was that, like, his type of humor? Yeah. I just really enjoy, for some reason, hearing him be like, that's just the... Blah, 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 blah. That's just the kind of guy I was. <laughs> I... 
that tickles me. Yeah, it's a it, it's very smart on the writer to, yeah. uh, to come up with that. Yeah. So now we had all the S names. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Soul Spirit Stein Sid. Um, who would I put next? Maybe Excalibur. Excalibur. Oh, that's a whole other topic too. Yeah. Because uh, he's he's controversial. Um, I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there, there's your top six. Um, oh, that was six? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will go with... When I first watched the series, I struggled between choosing between Soul and Death the Kid. Uh, something about just being the, the son of a Grim Reaper, having the dual pistols. Um, he does have a cool look. So like, I did like that about him. But I like, yeah. I really like Soul's personality because he... It, it's hard to categorize like why he's funny, but his funny moments are really funny. Yeah. And when he, it's cool that he has like all this different casual wear, and he'll like have his hair kind of put put back, and he plays like piano and stuff. And yeah. It's just like there's like cool elements to him that just makes him feel like he's a fully fleshed out character. Mm -hmm. And I mean, really, a lot of characters in Soul Eater feel that way, but like I feel like him and Maka have like some of the best at that. Yeah. Um this time watching it, Maka actually stood out more to me than she did before, um, where she might be my favorite now. It's kind of between her and Soul for me. Um, I just feel like Maka is such a different protagonist than what we normally see, especially in a shonen. Like, yeah. what other shonen is there a, a female main, like, protagonist? Especially one that, like, th there's absolutely no... Like, there's nothing about, like, her being, like... Ooh, like check out her body, this and that. Like, it's, like she, she's like by far like the hero, and she's like brave, and she likes to read, but she's not perfect either. Like she's, she's like the weakest in the group. She, she would lose to Death the Kid in a one-on-one -on -one fight. She would lose to Black Star in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, but she doesn't feel, but she still feels like she belongs in that group, and she feels like she has certain advantages that they don't have. You know, like, they all have strengths and weaknesses. Strength and weaknesses. Yeah. Um, so I feel like the writer had a tricky job making sure that she seemed, like, strong enough to be on everyone else's level, but, like, but at the same time, she's not exactly because she'd still lose to them on a one-on-one -on -one fight, but she has other qualities that make her better, which kind of takes us to the end of the series, but we're not going to talk about that right now. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'd go with Maka, Soul. Uh, it's hard not to say Mufune because he's so. I don't rem like. I, I I remember liking Mufune, but I actually liked him more for some reason too. And I was like, I want to see more of Mufune. Yeah. Uh, that's probably like, that might be my number one thing that like, if I could change something about the show other than it being more like the manga where it continues and it's like double the episodes, I, I might would say like if we only had like a little bit more stuff, it's like. Having a little bit more Mifune would be really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, Maka, Soul, uh, I'll throw Mifune up there. Um, yeah, make me feel better about my choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, Professor Stein is hard not to say. Um, Death the Kid, I'd still like to put up there. And then since you did six, um, Mm. Yeah, maybe I would put Death the Kid above Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah. I should. <laughs> yeah. Those are my top five, at least. It's really hard to choose. I mean, all the characters you named were really great, too. I liked all those characters. Um, Black Star, I think, is still great. What's interesting and cool about Black Star is, like, he's, like, kind of, like, the writer's take on the typical shonen character. You know, he's he, he kind of fits that bill of, of being that, like, rambunctious, like, kid who's, like, always wanting to fight and yells a lot, you know, like, Naruto. Um, but he... But he, he still feels like his own person, and he feels different than them. He does. And it seems like, since he's not the main character, I think it actually works better, because it kind of, like... It's like the show acknowledges some shonen tropes, but it doesn't, like, ever just feel like it has to follow them. Yeah. Which I think is one of Soul Eater's, like, biggest strengths. is like, it can follow tropes when it services the plot in the show, but it can also break away from tropes when it doesn't... When, when it can do something better. Yeah. And thank God, by the way, Black Star isn't the main character. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, so my first time watching it through, I absolutely hated Black Star. I couldn't stand him. This time... 
I did actually like him by the end, but... <laughs> so there's another difference. Yeah. But I still wouldn't want him to be the main character. But I can handle Black Star in small doses. Yeah, I, I like him more now than I used to. Yeah. Um... I never hated him, but I definitely liked him more this this most recent watch. And, yeah, it definitely... I think it helps that he's not the main character. They're able to have him in there when it makes the show better, but not to rely on him. Yeah. All right. So, going into... Uh, we'll stay on the topic of characters. Uh, we mentioned Excalibur earlier. Uh, I don't think it's any secret that you like Excalibur. Yeah. Uh, I like Excalibur, too. I know that will be a hot-button issue. That may have earned <laughs> us a few dislikes on this video. There are actually uh, <laughs> people that, like, hate him that much? Yes. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, let us know in the comments. Preferably you won't thumbs down the video because you hate Excalibur. But uh, let us know in the comments below uh, how you feel about Excalibur. Uh, what is it that you think you like about Excalibur? Um, he... He kind of reminds me of my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Because the way he looks. No, <laughs> no my grandpa's just kind of a windbag <laughs> until he like threads a lot of stories together that just like don't really make any sense. <laughs> um, so in that sense, yeah, he's like he's like my grandpa. But also, I feel like the voice just uh. really does it for me too. Like if he was voiced, if he had any other voice. I don't think I would like him as much. Yeah, Troy Baker did an amazing job. Yeah. <laughs> which is so funny to think about because he's went on to do so many great roles, like Joel from The Last of Us, um, the Joker, Booker, uh, DeWitt, and so many different characters that they would never get him to do like a small role like that, I feel like. Like, I don't even think he does anime anymore, really. Um, so to do like a small role in an anime like that, I don't think he would do, but... Or they wouldn't really be able to get him because they'd have to pay so much money. Um, yeah. But it, it's it's amazing. And uh, he is funny. And, and luckily, it's another it's another thing where they use him sparingly. You know, like... Yeah. If the, he was there all the time, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's Excalibur, the main character. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> you gotta make the, the face. Ugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we both like him. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, <laughs> uh, what was your favorite episode? My favorite episode. Or some, or some episodes that stand out to you as being really cool. Okay, well, always my favorite episode, this is one thing that hasn't changed, is the essay episode. Yeah. Or not, not the essay, but, um, the, the, the exam. The written exams, yes. yeah. The written exam. One of the, my favorite things about that is it shows, it really showcases the characters' personalities a lot. Yeah. I can't remember who said it, but someone basically said if you wanted to, uh, what they do for their characters is they used to make MySpace pages for each of their characters. Huh? And based on, like, the, how they would design their MySpace page would inform them of how they should write their characters better. Because it, like, it's like the same idea in My Hero Academia, they show off each of the characters' rooms. Mm -hmm. And... That actually gives you a lot more insight to like how those characters are, and so the idea of like okay, they're all going to basically react differently to this exam, so how would each of their personalities you know affect this? So you know, Black Star went to cheat, and he's a knucklehead, so he got caught. He cares about his autograph and his name, so that leads him to doing that. Uh, Soul's trying to do whatever it takes to win. You know, Maka's playing it cool. Um, Liz is sitting there just, you know, getting fixated on this dumb little thing. You know, so like, they're all... And, and, like, Death the Kid is highly intelligent, so you're like, oh, maybe he can best Maka. But then he just gets stuck trying to write his name perfectly. <laughs> yes. So it's, uh, it is the funniest uh, yeah. moment in the show. My dad does not like cartoons. He definitely doesn't like anime. But he watched this episode with me before, and he actually laughed. <laughs> he enjoyed himself. <laughs> yeah, that, that says a lot. Yes. Um, I assume the Mafune episodes are also up there for you? Yes. Not in terms of humor, but in terms of how much you enjoyed it. Yeah. Every time I'm watching a Mafune episode, I go from sitting like this to sitting like this. Because <laughs> I'm interested. Um... Let's see. 
Aside from from those. Yeah, Medusa continues to be a great villain. Like she does. Every time I watch it, it's like she's a super good villain. Arachne, I wish they could have done more with. It seems she has the elements to make a cool villain, but she always feels very inferior to Medusa in terms not not in terms maybe of like strength. Like I believe like Arachne would have a good battle with Medusa. Maybe she could even beat Medusa, but yeah. we don't get to really see Arachne. Like we don't get to really see what she can do, and we don't really get like that much from her. It's kind of like. Oh, like she's like mysterious enough to where you're like, okay, 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 all right, all right, all right. and she dies, and you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been nice to see more from Arachne. Uh, when it comes to Medusa, I know Abby and I were talking, and we were saying that it makes sense that Ashura was the final boss in the anime. But it does feel weird when Medusa dies, because it's like, yeah. we, we kind of start the series with her, and she just kind of dies, and she's like just thrown to the side, and then it's like, okay, now we're focusing on Ashra. Yeah. And I don't really know how they could change that or fix that, but it, it just feels, it feels like kind of sad to see Medusa go, even though like we don't <laughs> like her like no. as a person. We <laughs> like her as a character, we don't like her as a person. Yeah. But it was just like, huh. I'm not sure how they could really work around that. Yeah, I don't either. But she did definitely feel like the big bad. Like, I mean, she... In a way, she kind of seemed scarier <laughs> than Ashura. Sometimes. Like, Sometimes. Ashura had those moments where, like, when they went to go release him from that skin sack that he was in. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah, yeah, and the people were, like, twisting their heads and seeing, like, all this weird stuff. Yeah. That was probably, like, the scariest moment of the show. Yeah. Because, I mean, the show's not scary, but, like, if anything in that show scared you, it'd be that. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, and also, like, Free and Erica just kind of get thrown out, too, because they're like, oh, this must mean that Medusa's dead, so then they... I'm like, alright, well, we need to leave. And then they leave, but it doesn't... It would have been cool, I guess, if they had hinted at, like, what their next plans are. I mean, obviously not to, like, try to attack DWMA or something, because the show has to wrap up and end, but maybe if it's like, oh, well... Like, it would have been cool maybe, like, to see Erica be like, oh, like, I'm finally free, you know, of Medusa, and then maybe, like, see her feel, like, a little bad where... Or I don't know, I don't know how how Erica would feel you know like but it'd be cool to see yeah. that because I don't know I assume she would be like thank thank goodness I'm free like <laughs> I, I can live and I can go do whatever I want I don't have to worry about attacking DWMA and like maybe her and Free are like uh, let's go live out here together and like go check out things that kind of like hints at like them at least being friends or something like like after all of this and then going somewhere together and just kind of forgetting like leaving that life behind or they could go another route and then have her. Uh, like seem like she goes to be happy and then Freeze like why aren't you and then she kind of stops and like hesitates and then Freeze like what's the matter like why aren't you happy like she's gone so you don't have to worry about the snakes and then she's like I don't know I think a part of me will miss her or something I don't know like <laughs> it doesn't have to be that way like I, I kind of feel like it makes more sense that she'd be ecstatic and free but either one of those things would have I felt like given those characters a little bit more of an ending and it would have been cool because yeah. they have they have like a bi they have like a decently big presence in the beginning. Yeah, they do. I, I mean, I will say they had like a tiny little scene in the credits. I don't know if you caught it. Oh, maybe I forgot that. What is it? Um. So I sort of looked away, like, and then just barely caught it. But it looked like it was her and free. Um, like. It looked like they were standing in, like, a garden or something. Okay. Like, they were in a lovely place just having a nice time. So. Okay, well, that's cool. Okay, well, I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy they did that. Yeah. I thought I thought I was watching the entirety of the credits, because uh, I, I didn't want to miss anything, but I, maybe I just blinked and it was, like, <laughs> Yeah, it, was it wasn't gone. there very long at all. Yeah, so. but that's cool. I, I appreciate that, so that's awesome. Um, so, let's get into complaints, but we're going to reserve talking about the ending still. Okay. So we're not going to mention the ending, um, but any complaints you have about the show in general? Actually, I guess real quick, let's go through what's the main things you really like uh, about the show, and then we'll go get to complaints. The main things I like? Yeah. 
I really like the humor. It's very, like, offbeat. Yeah, which I, I is, mean, like, my favorite. <laughs> yes, mine too. Uh, there's definitely some, like, tropey anime humor yeah. in there. Um, like the, oh, you pervert stuff. I mean, yeah. That, that's in, like, every anime, yeah. right? But, um, yeah, for the most part, more offbeat. And uh, I really like... I know some people say that they really don't like the art style, but I like it um, a lot. <laughs> I like the kind of spooky vibe that it yeah, has. Yeah, we love Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> if that wasn't already given away. <laughs> and I just feel like the characters are so good. Like, I mean, you already kind of touched on it, mm -hmm. but like most of them aren't um, very chirpy at all. They're, they're all... They stand out on their own. Even yeah. uh, to this day, there's not other anime characters that feel like them. Yeah. Like Stein holds his own. Death the Kid holds his own. Soul holds his own. Like they all just stand out. And when you see them, like you know immediately who you're looking at. And then their personalities are still very different too. Yes. Yeah. So for me, it's definitely the style. You know, character design, the art, the art style, the music choices, the sound. The, the voice acting, like, everything... Oh, yeah, the voice acting is great. <laughs> yeah, everything that was done for the show was great. So, we're going to get to some of our criticisms, but I don't think we have much criticisms. Not, not really. Especially since we're not going to talk about the end right now. But, um, do you have any criticisms that come to mind? Because for me, the, 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 the only thing that's really jumped to my mind so far is that... I want it to be like twice the length. <laughs> and mostly, it's not just because I enjoy the series, but I feel like I feel like they have a lot more there. And actually, I don't just feel that way. We, we know that they have a lot more there because I don't want to spoil the manga, but the manga does go on about twice the length. Uh, so there's like, tw there is about twice the content already written. And so I feel like that is the biggest downside. And I think that's what most people would say. Yeah, I... I would like it if it followed the manga. There is one one thing that I will not spoil <laughs> in the manga fr from the manga that I've been told about that I'm happy it didn't happen that way in the anime and it would make me sad if that did happen in yeah. the anime. Which you, you can figure out what she's talking about if you've read the manga and you've heard other other things in this video. You can put two two to two together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um but outside of that no real issues jump out to you. Um, nothing that wouldn't be fixed by having it, uh, longer. Okay, cool. So, the ending. This is the, this is what everyone's here for, is to talk about this ending. Because anytime someone mentions Soul Eater, there's always this caveat, like, dude, I love Soul Eater, but, uh, yeah, that ending, though. Or, like, <laughs> Soul Eater's great, just, uh, the ending kind of sucks, or whatever. Like, I hear that sentiment all the time. And yeah. I was curious how it would resonate with me now, pun intended. <laughs> and honestly, uh, I like the Solider ending more now than I ever have before. But I will say there is something that still bothers me. But it's not the punch. The infamous <laughs> bravery punch. So, yeah. so hold, hold up, don't click off the video yet if you feel upset. Um, so a lot of people are upset. They, they feel like, you know... They try to use all these big attacks, ultimate attacks, and then Maka just punches the Kishin, and he's like, ah, and like blows up and dies. <laughs> um, yeah. Real quick though, um, my my something I have much more of a bigger problem with is the fact that they they randomly show that she's part weapon, and she but, starts having the blades come out. Yeah, that but, without him even bringing that up to me, that was what I said was my biggest gripe with the ending. Just Maka is randomly a weapon, and they, they didn't know that the entire time until right then, and then it doesn't even matter because it doesn't really help. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really help. It didn't really matter. It, it's a huge plot point that just gets dropped and then just doesn't matter. And in a way, I feel like it sort of invalidates soul. Like, it's even... Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, she's even a scythe too, where it's like, is he even, like useful to her at this point if she can just have all these 
Like, he can only have one scythe blade. She can have, like, 50, you know? Yeah. Um, so it just seems like it cheapens her connection with Soul. And I feel like they still could have done what they did anyways with her. Like, she could have been unconscious, and it's like, oh, she's using her soul to, like, even though she's unconscious, her soul is acting on its own, and then as she's being attacked, like, she's, like, kind of, like, Jedi forcing it, where she's, like, uh-huh. like, like subconsciously moving out of the way and dodging all the attacks, and then runs up and tries to punch them or whatever, she, you know, like, because yeah. she tries to strike them, like, with the, the blades coming out, so... That wouldn't be any more out of the question, but would have been less, like... Yeah, it would have it would have gotten the same job done without it being like, like what? <laughs> uh, so that is my big gripe. the The bravery punch, as we'll call it for for this, um, I actually feel like it was was fine. And the reason why I feel like it was fine is because, for one, they had been building. Some people would say that they hate it because they've been building up the whole genie hunter aspect. Because they're like, oh, Maka needs to be able to master Genie Hunter. Previously, she could only use it when Soul was playing the, the, the piano and was like synchronizing, and so she finally pulls it off, and she goes to. Use, but see, that's your that's your standard shonen trope. Yeah. You know, and so Soul Eater has that as a red herring. You know, and and Soul Eater actually has multiple red herrings in the show. Anyways, like the idea of like. Oh, death could be a bad guy. Like he could oh, be, yeah. he could be, he could be against us. And it's like, oh no, that actually didn't matter. <laughs> uh, same sort of thing happens with Genie Hunter. Like it, it's like, oh, that one didn't matter because they were all saying like that's what she would have to rely on is Genie Hunter, and it didn't work. Um, I don't, I don't think it would have been more satisfying to just have your ultimate attack knock out the bad guy because that's what we yeah. normally see. Like I've seen that already, and I've seen that a lot of times. What they do here is interesting because the whole they actually introduce this concept throughout the whole show is the concept of madness and how everyone has madness in them, you know. And Stein says that everyone has it in them, but he has it more so affecting him than anyone else. Yeah. And you see how that madness dwells in him and it turns him into someone that actually turns against his his allies. And the point is, is the counter to madness is bravery, um, and and. Ashra is an incarnation. Like, he is the embodiment of madness. He's everything it represents, and he he's everything that it is. Yeah. And so I actually think it's cool to have, like, a yin to the yang, the light to the dark. You have madness, and over here you have bravery. So it's not the, it's not the physical punch that defeats him. It is the it is bravery that defeats the madness. And yeah. it's by... And, and it's actually... In, the theme even shows up earlier, like, when she gets the postcard and they decipher it, and, like, Stein says it, it means bravery, and that's something, like, her mom sent to, to her. And, you know, like I said earlier, like, Maka's strength has never been her ultimate attack. It's never been her physical strength. Like I said, she could lo- she would lose a fight against Blackstar or Death the Kid. But, so, like, what one thing does she have that they don't? What well, both of them, uh, the thing was is they weren't afraid but they didn't have bravery. They were just fearless. They didn't. They they weren't like. They were just like whatever about it. Yeah. She she was genuinely afraid of dying because she felt inferior and weak. Like she was, like she was scared, nervous, like shaking. She like, like she was like screaming in pain. You know, like she. But she had to find that bravery within herself because, like, there's a difference between being brave and being fearless. Like being brave means that you're afraid, but you're going towards danger anyways, even though you're afraid, which yeah. is what Maka did. Right. And also, I mean, some people could still argue that, like, well, how does it make any sense that bravery is the, like, antithesis of madness? But in the in the show, at least, death calls uh, Asher a coward multiple times. Like, and, and, you know, I feel like they make it pretty clear that Ashura is, like, afraid um yeah like he's clearly shown as being afraid and he and he kills arachne because he starts to like have feelings towards her and he's like oh no like i'm scared to feel that feeling so i'm just gonna kill her so i don't have to yeah and he goes into madness because his mind wandered so much yeah he was scared of dying was that it he was yeah, yeah he kept pro- he kept projecting all these anxieties and so he just gave himself over to madness. Yeah. But if he was brave, he wouldn't have to have done any of that. 
So that's how it counters itself. Yeah. And it fits in with Krona, you know, because all the teachers, all the adults there is saying, like, oh, Maka has to use this attack, or, like, Maka, that's her specialty. And Krona's like, that's not Maka's specialty. It's her bravery. And that's directly what changed Krona to becoming a better person. Yeah. Was, he, he was on the baddest <laughs> track. <laughs> yeah, and and literally Maka converted him and changed him for the better. And she basically, like, as he had the needles coming out everywhere, she walked up even though it could have skewered her. Like, Soul was like, no, don't do that, Maka, you'll die. And yeah. she kept doing it and she gave him a hug. And so literally the themes brought in at the beginning of the show, all throughout the show to the end, led to that moment. And so I actually, uh, I actually stand by that. <laughs> I stand by the ending. I think for for it being crammed into fifty one episodes or fifty whatever episodes, I actually feel like uh, it works for what they were stuck with. Again, I would prefer it to be extended and have all the manga content there as well. But if you are telling me that it has to be fifty episodes and it was either like Ultimate Attack or this this uh, version, then I choose this version. Yeah. On top of that, it did another thing that I really appreciate in the show, which is it shows all the characters and like ties up their stories through the pictures and through the, the video, even though I happened to miss the, the one with Free <laughs> and Erica. Uh, it was fun seeing like Azaza and like Marie and seeing like uh, Spirit and Stein and seeing all those moments and it kicked back in the first ending theme because we had gotten like four or five different ending themes before. Yeah. And having that original one, which, you know, like all the endings was super good, but it's just so cool to hear that again. And, and it actually got me more emotional, whereas, like, I, I wasn't emotional at all, like, any other time I've watched this show. But seeing it this time, like, kind of brought back, like, I don't want to say, like, old memories, but it, like, made me, it's like, oh, man, I kind of forgot my friends in Soul Eater here. And then I've revisited them. Yeah. And then seeing them all together, having a good time, and having that song kick back in, I was like, oh, man, this is actually hitting me harder than it ever has before. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really sweet. I liked it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, if you haven't checked it out, in Japan they re-released uh, Soul Eater on air, and then they added two new openings and two new endings. And at first I felt conflicted because the opening and endings are really good that they added, but of course the originals are really good, and so I thought they replaced them. But it turns out that they just they, they broke them up where it alternates. So instead of having, like, two openings uh, for the entire series, they have four openings for the entire series. Oh. So definitely check out those opening openings and endings because they are just as good, I would say, as the, the original <laughs> ones, which I wouldn't normally think, but they are done really well. Uh, so, yeah, those those songs are awesome. Okay. I didn't. I don't think I knew that. Did I know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I will show you uh, once we're done. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you'd like to add to this little discussion? Anything you'd like to stamp into the uh, the the time space of YouTube to remember forever about your opinion on Soul Eater? Um, I would like to say that I love Soul Eater, and I love Excalibur. So. Fool. <laughs> <laughs> I say love Soul Eater want. too. Um, it's a great anime. <laughs> If you're for some reason watching this and you haven't watched Soul Eater, um, sorry for spoiling things for you, but go watch Soul Eater. You should go watch it. Yes. <laughs> um, and if you're still here, uh, you should check out our links in the description below. We have a Discord that currently has over 550 members. A lot of us are anime fans, and our new anime club is Oran High School Host Club, which I will be watching for the first time. I've, I've seen the first episode, but I will be watching it in its entirety for the first time. Uh, I guess a, a, a almost a flipped situation that we had previously, yeah. and this will be uh, not Abby's first time. And uh, not at all. <laughs> but we'll, but we're it's not just us watching it. We're we're gonna have our Discord community watching it too. So if you're interested in that, check that out and watch along with us. We're watching four episodes a week until we finish it, and we'll be discussing it. It'll be a lot of fun. If you'd like to talk more Soul Eater, of course we can do that as well. We also do streams. We stream video games and board games, and we do all kinds of other cool stuff. So we'd love to have you there. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe. We love you guys. Stay awesome. Bye. Nami? 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 
नौमी